Let me read to you a passage from the first chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 35 to 42. It's the Gospel for Thursday before the Epiphany. St. John writes, John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Peter, Cephas. That's from the first chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 35 to 42. And what does it suggest to us? Well, I have always felt that among the many beautiful scenes of the Gospel, this one, at the beginning of our Lord's public ministry, is especially touching. The scene is played out from the point of view of the two disciples who had been disciples of John the Baptist, one of whom was Andrew the brother of Simon Peter. They had been disciples of John, and that alone tells us that they were young men of real quality and had absorbed his teaching. John their teacher now points them in a new direction. Without requiring it of them, he intimates that they ought now follow the one whom he calls the Lamb of God. He is the one who will take away the sin of the world. John has prepared them to be disciples of the Messiah, helping them to become good soil for the Word who is God. And so our two disciples, hearing what John said, followed Jesus. They did so because they were good, and they yearned for greater goodness in God. At this our Lord turned, and, we may imagine, with a welcoming smile, asked them what they were seeking. He knew the hearts of men, as St. John says later in his Gospel, and he would have seen at a glance that they were following him because their hearts were seeking the God of holiness. His simple question led to their own question, in which they asked our Lord where he lived. They were in effect asking him if they could follow him and be in his company. The very way they addressed our Lord suggests this, for they called him Rabbi, which means teacher. Thus, right at the outset, placing themselves in the position of disciples in the presence of a master. Our Lord's invitation was immediate, that they come and see, come and see for themselves what being in his company and learning from him would be like. He was saying in effect, yes, come and follow me and consider being my disciples. They stayed with him for the rest of that day, and their lives were sealed. That was the call. It was an initial one to be confirmed later on. But what is especially beautiful is the limpid description of their staying with Jesus for the rest of the day. Let us watch them accompany, accompanying Jesus along the journey after their initial meeting. They conversed with him, their hearts wide open to him, because of the high testimony about him given by their former master, John the Baptist. 
They had accepted John's teaching about him, and now they were privileged to be in his company, and our Lord was fully accepting them into his friendship. Let us imagine the conversation as they walked on, and as they finally arrive at where our Lord was staying. Perhaps it was not far from where John had been exercising his ministry, and I suppose it was a dwelling constructed by our Lord himself for the simple and brief period that he planned to be with John the Baptist. Our Lord up to that point had been a carpenter by profession, and so the dwelling would have been well up to the mark of all that was needed. So there our Lord received his new friends, extended to them his hospitality and friendship, and thus he gained his first disciples and two of the twelve. The conversation continued in the little dwelling and grew in depth. It must have been a profoundly revealing and life-changing few hours, because Andrew went to his brother and told him with evident conviction that he had found the Messiah. The Messiah. To reach this conviction, all it had needed was the testimony of John and some prime time with our Lord himself. There is a great lesson for us here. We have the testimony of the scriptures and of the church's immense tradition as to the person of Jesus. What we need to do is to accept totally this testimony and then spend plenty of time with Jesus. He will draw us into his friendship and reveal himself to us. So let us resolve to spend time with Jesus every day and all through our lives. If we do this, he will show himself to us and we shall become his disciples. Andrew, after having come to know Jesus personally and to learn for himself the truth of what John had testified, went on immediately to introduce his brother Simon to the Lord. So too, if we come to know Jesus through personal prayer and adherence to the church's testimony, we shall be led to bring others to Jesus. Let us then adhere unfailingly, unfailingly to the church's teaching and make quality prayer central to our lives.